Hey everybody, I've got a really cool video for you today because we are going to resurrect this nitro-powered RC car which has been sitting for the better part of a decade. Now let's kind of dive into it and talk about the essentials on how these little machines work. So of course you've got this removable body shell which comes off at the pull of four pins and now we can start to see the inner workings. Now here you can see the basic engine. So it's a single cylinder unit, it's an air-cooled unit and these run on a nitro methane methanol mix and they actually operate a lot like a diesel engine so you've got a glow plug to start the ignition process but then once the little motor fires it actually runs on compression and heat kind of like a diesel engine and then it's a two-stroke design so there's no integrated oil sump it's actually oiled by the fuel itself now these Traxxas units have an electric start which is operated via a starting handle which you insert here and then the T-Max was revolutionary because it sends its power to all four wheels via a two-speed automatic transmission with a reverse which is all done through this little box right here and it's actually a three-channel unit so you have one servo that operates the throttle we've got another servo of course for the steering and then a third servo down here to shift that transmission between forward and reverse now this little machine in general was such a cool thing back in the day first of all you have eight individual oil filled shocks with a double wishbone suspension you've got this aluminum chassis which was pretty revolutionary back in the day now this would have launched with the Traxxas 1.5 engine this model originally had the 2.5 I burned through two of those before finally upgrading to this 3.3 back in the day and this was a huge expense when you're like 13 14 years old I had to save a lot of money a lot of cutting grass to get this little engine in there and unfortunately it's in pretty rough shape. Now, um, it's, it's fair to say that 12 year old me did not do a very good job of maintaining my models and this thing was beat to heck, but yet it's still hanging in there and I'm pretty confident we're gonna be able to get this little guy running, but not without some difficulty because if you are used to the world of electric RC, these nitro powered units required a lot of kind of faffing about to get them to run and you needed a lot of stuff that you had to bring to the track and if you forgot any one of these things you basically weren't having fun um, with your uh, your hobby grade RC so let's talk about some of the things that you need now first of all you need nitro fuel and I just purchased all this stuff because I didn't have it from back in the day and it was shockingly expensive the number of things I had to get so this is the Traxxas top fuel once again this is nitro methane mixed with methanol and you can get it in a various percentage mix this I believe is 20% but you can get it between like 20 and 40% depending on your preference now this is one quart and it cost me over $15 it's basically race fuel that you'd ex expect to find in like a top fuel dragster um, that's what these little cars run on okay it's not exactly like that but that's the basic principle now as I mentioned the team actually has an electric start system and the electric start uh, is powered by this little wand but the little wand needs energy to actually supply the motor to turn the engine over so that means I had to go out and get a battery now Batteries are significantly more affordable than when I was in the hobby in like 2008, 2009. So I got this uh, Traxxas power cell. It's just an 1800 milliamp hour, but it was $15. But then of course I needed a charger to charge that battery. So I went out and just got the cheapest charger that they had at my local hobby shop. But we're not done yet because in order to get the fuel into the little fuel tank, sure you can try to dump it in there, but nine times out of 10 you're gonna spill, so I really, really, really recommend getting one of these little uh, fuel bottles. These are pretty cheap, this was like eight bucks, but basically all this is, is a little wand to help you or, or prevent you from spilling all over, and I've already lost the cap to that. So eight bucks there. Um, now beyond that, a couple of other things that you really need. Now this is a glow driver. This is not mandatory because the Traxxas system actually, uh, well, it's got this little lead to power the glow plug from this little uh, starter stick. However, I've never really had that great luck with it. So I typically run an external glow driver to uh, warm up the glow plug externally. Um, and that was surprisingly expensive. And I think that is the end of the list of the major things I need. So this process of actually getting this engine started began a few days ago. So I bought the battery, stuck it in the easy start wand here, went to crank it over, and the motor was locked 
firm. Now I have experienced this lockup in the past on various other RC models I've worked on, and I have successfully unstuck a few engines in the past. Now, uh, my favorite way to do that is to simply pull the glow plug and then go ahead and pour a little bit of like WD-40 in there, kind of get the inner workings of the engine lubricated. While I tried that, I let it sit for a couple of nights and no luck. engine was still frozen, so I went to the big gun, they went out and bought the Marvel Mystery Oil, which I've had really good luck with, um, cleared out the WD-40, uh, you know, stuck that in the combustion chamber, and once again, no luck, this engine was frozen solid, so I had to get a little bit creative, a little bit nifty, now what I should have done, the correct thing to do would have been to pull the engine, pull off the backing plate, and see what was going on, but I had a pretty good idea of exactly what was going on, um, I fear all those years ago, when I shut this engine off for the last time, um, the piston was probably at top dead center, and as I understand it, the bore of these engines are actually tapered toward the top, and as it cooled down, it actually kind of shrunk around that piston, and then add to that eight, nine years of sitting, and it was all just kind of jammed up, stuck together. So um, I, I used the Traxxas method to get it unstuck. It's a little bit sketchy, but basically you take a screwdriver and you just pry on the flywheel, except I wanted a little bit more, a little bit more oomph, so I actually used a chisel. It's probably not ideal, but with enough pressure, I was able to get the engine unstuck, and then I was able to go in and really lubricate um, that crankshaft and, and get it nice and kind of free. And now, I'm happy to say, after uh, several cycles of Marvel Mystery Oil and WD-40 and gently turning it over, the engine is free. So, that's a big deal. Um, I can, you know, take my finger, stick it here in the flywheel, and that engine actually turns over now um, surprisingly easily. But uh, in the process, some of these old plastic components have, um, have uh, well, disintegrated. So, for example, this exhaust coupler, which attaches the manifold to the ex actual exhaust pipe, um, well, that exploded. So, I've got a couple of uh, uh, new guys here, which we're going to stick on. And then, I also went ahead and bought couple of new glow plugs and yeah hopefully we're on the right track to getting this little motor running now a um, couple of things I am a little concerned about is there's a teeny tiny amount of fuel left in there from last time I ran it and it's looking a little bit like jelly so I'm tempted just to pull this fuel tank out which well, should be pretty easy I think it's just uh, four bolts yeah let's do that let's see uh, exactly what uh, what the fuel tank is looking like because I don't really want to run that jelly through the car but it's probably not gonna help the situation much all right so I think we're getting pretty close here um, I've got this broke <laughs> basically fuel line to the exhaust and then I've got one more line here that goes to the engine Oof, that's looking pretty goopy let me go ahead and clear this out. Now, ideally, I'd have some new fuel line, which I could stick on here, but that's the one thing I forgot to buy. So I'm gonna try to salvage what I got here. All right, well, we are back with our fuel tank, looking cleaner. I wouldn't say clean, but cleaner, given the, the resources I have here at the office. See, this is what all the electric kids growing up right now are missing. They're missing the fun of clogged fuel lines and old fuel tanks and something very kind of fun about making a, an old car run again, or at least trying to. So fuel tank is mounted back up into position. Let me get this uh, exhaust flange mounted up here too. All right, so I got a couple of zip ties, got a set of pliers. Let's get this old one off thing's so crusty. All right, so the exhaust system is back together. Now there's only a couple of other things I need to do before we can hopefully get this thing running. I know, it's kind of a process, but that's what made these fun. We'll go with it. Um, I wanna get the remainder of that Marvel Mr. Oil slash WD-40 out of the combustion chamber. So what that means is I am going to basically hold this paper towel over the top of the cylinder head, and I'm gonna make a little custom spunt to kind of stick up the exhaust so we don't go shooting Marble Mystery Oil all over our studio here. So, yeah, that should be fine. That should do the trick. Um, and then I'm gonna take 
the easy start wand and I'm gonna stick it in the hole here. I'm just gonna crank it over and as you can see, it's shooting that lovely, lovely red stuff out of the top of the piston. That should probably be fine. All right, so only two more things left to do. I need to install a new glow plug and then I need to um, change out the batteries on the car that control the servos. Um, and in case you're wondering, all of the things I had to buy, excluding the model with the gas and the glow igniter and the, the battery and the charger, like 130 bucks. <laughs> so, <laughs> I mean, I could have gotten a pretty decent RC for 130 bucks, but you know, it's always more fun to revive an old one in my mind. All oh, right, so the last couple things I need to do um, we're gonna get some uh, fuel in this and then start it. That, that's the hope at least. All right, well, it's the moment of truth. So let's go ahead and turn on the transmitter, fire up the receiver. The steering servo is looking a little, uh, a little past it for sure. Now, just like a diesel, I'm gonna have to actually glow the glow plug. I'm gonna stick the glow igniter here on top of the glow plug. There we go. Uh, I think it's time for the moment of truth. So that's on there. Oh, we're getting pretty close actually. That's sounding pretty promising. Let me uh, turn up the throttle trim a little bit. Try to get some fuel in there. All right, well, so far no ignition, but I'm gonna pull an old school trick here. We're just gonna dump some gas right in the carburetor. Oh, now we should be able to get a fire going here. Hopefully not a car fire, but you know what I mean. We got it running for just a sec there. Idle was too high. Um, ideally, I'd get some kind of, maybe I'll do that. I'll get a box so we can kind of let the tires and wheels spin underneath it. First signs of life there though. Is that gonna provide the clearance we need? So here's what's going on. The car will run, but only when pouring fuel directly into the carburetor. So we know we have ignition, or we have that glow plug getting nice and hot. We obviously have rotation in the motor, so the engine's running, but we're not actually getting fuel up to the carb. So here's my idea, it's kind of sketchy, but I'm gonna actually pull the, the, the fuel line that goes to the exhaust. I'm gonna blow into it as hard as I can to try to get fuel up to the carb. I think it's still probably a little gunked up. Um, fingers crossed. see we got it running we got it idling we got it revving now it's running incredibly rich but I'm super stoked even after sitting for over a decade this engine is actually pouring along pretty darn well so I'm really excited to get the body on it uh, button a few things up I think I need a new steering servo it's feeling a little bit probably old and clunky and then in the next video we're gonna get out on the on the dirt and see how this old puppy runs after sitting for nine years or so. Well guys, thank you for watching this video. This was a ton of fun to make. As always, subscribe to TFL Classics. Check us out on Patreon if you want to help the cause, and we'll see you on the next episode.